Manga is a visual medium. The imagery of a series is just as important in making us feel the emotions and the impact of each scene as the writing is. And in this regard, while One Piece is universally praised for its writing as one of the most ambitious and visionary epics in fictional history, what you don't see as much recognition for is the actual, literal beauty of the series. One Piece is a visually beautiful story. It is, in fact, criminally underrated when it comes to its pure artistic value, as so much of what makes One Piece, One Piece, is precisely the fantastical, dreamlike imagery of a world unlike any other that captivates readers. The largest reason that One Piece isn't praised as much for its art is because Oda is not as technically brilliant an artist as other mangaka. He's not Miura or Araki, and even compared to other weekly mangaka, Oda's art, on average, is nowhere near as technically refined. However, art is not purely about level of detail or technical prowess. Art is about impact. The power of an image to make you feel, to make you think, to captivate your imagination. And when it comes to the sheer power of imagery, One Piece's art, in its best moments, is undeniably up there amongst the greatest in the medium. To understand what I mean, I'm going to break down the three greatest strengths of Oda's imagery that makes One Piece an underrated visual masterpiece. First, in creating enthralling dreamscapes. This is one area where One Piece simply stands alone. You know why One Piece feels like the adventure to end all adventures? A journey beyond what is possible, a testament to the infinite potential of dreams? It's because of the surreal worlds that are brought to life through Oda's art. One Piece goes through more location and setting changes than any other manga, and more than most fantasy series in general, and I challenge you to find a story that has more consistently unique and wondrous vistas than One Piece. Again, it's not about the technical wizardry. You can find more detailed fictional landscapes, of course, but the conceptual beauty of One Piece's whimsically imaginative locales simply stands alone. You can show a spread of a One Piece island to someone who has never read the series and has no context, and it will still immediately invoke a sense of wonder through the imagery alone. I mean, Water 7, Zoe, Whole Cake, Fishman Island, the list goes on and on. Even today in Egghead, 1100 chapters into the story, we're still having our minds blown by new impossible lands. One Piece makes you feel like anything is possible because we are so repeatedly shown visions of the impossible. The greatest example I can think of is Ennis Lobby. As to date, Ennis Lobby is the single most dreamlike setting that I have ever experienced in a story. Even though it may no longer seem as vast and mysterious to the reader today, as we are now familiar with the technical explanation of its structure, which robs it a bit of its novelty, at the time that we were in the Ennis Lobby arc, it was as though we were being shown the edge of the world itself a waterfall in the middle of the ocean leading to a sea of clouds, obscuring distant gates so vast and unending it was as though they stretched across the heavens themselves. The atmosphere of the Ennis Lobby arc was unforgettable and simply irreplicable precisely because of the otherworldly imagery of the island. And it's not just the settings that have this dreamlike quality to them. How many times can you find a random One Piece scene that is visually just so creatively inspired? A marvelous tapestry of ideas and details to soak in. While I could pour through the whole story pulling examples on examples, at the same time I'd point to the total other end of the spectrum, which is not so much dreamlike sceneries, but instead striking individual shots. See, Oda's second outstanding strength as an artist is in concocting these singular shots that are simply vividly memorable as standalone visions. What do I mean by that? For example, you know what one of the coolest things about Gear 5th is to me? In almost any other series I can think of, the most important power-up or transformation the hero has can be immediately associated with a particular image, and it's pretty much always going to be one depicting the hero's form in full display. But when readers think of Gear 5th, almost no one thinks of this image, where we get to see Luffy's full form. When we think of Gear 5th, almost everyone's mind immediately goes to something far more abstract. The silhouette of the sun god emerging against the backdrop of the moon. This is the imagery that is burnt into our brains. This is the shot that none of us will ever forget. 
And it's not because the form was so carefully, technically detailed. Rather, the brilliance is purely in the idea. It's the imagination to think of a singular shot with the perfect framing and symbolism to leave an impression that will never fade away. And you know what's crazy is this isn't even my favorite shot of the moon in One Piece. And Oda certainly comes up with a lot of spectacular shots of the moon. No, my favorite shot is one that is actually often forgotten right at the end of Grum Kingdom, as the Straw Hats, led by their reindeer, seemingly fly across the sky to return to their adventure. It's a visual trick that only works by planting the cable car route up the mountain earlier in the arc, so that Chopper can then run across it against the moonlit backdrop, giving the illusion of flight. And what it produces is a simply magical moment. And I promise the only reason this shot isn't remembered by everyone is because it is immediately overshadowed by an even more striking and even more elaborately planned out spread. Across the drum-shaped mountains, an incandescent pink cloud spreads, creating the illusion of giant cherry blossom trees somehow blooming even in a harsh, snowy land. A beautiful depiction of the simple concept that nothing is impossible if you dream big enough. An idea even more perfectly illustrated by the climactic shot of the Skypea arc, as Luffy, having genuinely pulled off the impossible and reached the heavens, now casts a titanic shadow across all the world below, having dreamed bigger than any of them ever could. See, the recurring pattern you'll see throughout One Piece's most iconic images is that Oda is immensely talented at capturing the multitude of ideas themes, and messaging in his storylines in singular, profound moments of symbolism that are both visually powerful and conceptually deeply meaningful. These shots add a sense of grandeur to the series, and there are so many moments where I stop and think, Oda could not have come up with a better image to organically write into the story that symbolically captures the essence of the narrative any better. Lastly, two small notes on imagery that I'll make is that Oda is also very strong at framing sudden, bold, dramatic images, such as the moment that Ace was revealed to be Roger's son, or Zoro's seppuku scene, and of course Whitebeard's death. At the same time, Oda makes great use of white space at rare moments to add a heady feel of destiny and greater purpose to otherwise simple events. On the other hand, Oda is also fantastic at littering the series with small, minor moments of just quaint or charming imagery that add to the sense of magic that comes with reading One Piece, like a man riding a bicycle across the ocean, or a spiraling candy staircase, or even the shot of Wapple's gaping mouth hidden in snow. But the final standout strength of Oda as an artist is one that no one could possibly argue, character designs. Visual design is of course an integral part of a character's identity, and with a series with as many characters as One Piece, it's imperative that even the most minor characters have to stand out in some way. Luckily, with Oda's talent for character designs, half the battle in making minor characters memorable is done right there. There is no other series that you will find, with the sheer variety of character designs that One Piece boasts, with countless variations of body types, races, transformations, fashion choices, and so on. And genuinely, One Piece's greatest calling card in this regard is the sheer range of possibilities. In One Piece, you can find some of the absolute most absurd, comically ridiculous designs imaginable, many of these designs even being saved for some of the strongest characters in the story. And yet, at the same time, Oda can casually drop some of the most intricately drawn, menacing character types you'll ever see in any series. The Gorosei in particular were a hard flex of just how well Oda can pull off the darker, more nightmarish aesthetic that most don't traditionally associate with One Piece. But it's not that Oda can't draw any kind of character he so chooses, it's simply that it wasn't yet time for him to dip his toes into that well of horror-inspired designs, as Oda tends to approach each new cast of characters with clear themes in mind. See, while Oda has tremendous variety in designs, he's not just throwing things at the wall. The true genius of his character design work is in how individual characters fit together in a broader ensemble as One Piece's ensemble designs strike this perfect balance of having tremendous diversity and yet clearly unifying ideologies. 
Just look at groups like the Big Mom Pirates and how even among the hordes and hordes of her lowest underlings, we can still see countless unique designs, but at the same time, consider the uniting themes and trends you can see in this group a sort of twisted Alice in Wonderland menagerie, and compare that to the far more traditionally barbaric and physically imposing warriors of the Beast Pirates. Every single group is curated to project a specific type of aesthetic, ranging from classical mobster gangs to Power Rangers. But within each ensemble, every single character also stands out prominently on their own. So ultimately, is Oda the most technical artist out there? No but he is one of the most imaginative artists. And the most imaginative artists come up with the most powerful imagery, be it mesmerizing dreamscapes, unforgettably evocative shots, or a never-ending stream of delightfully vibrant character designs, One Piece's artwork never goes too long without giving us something visually gratifying to feast on. And among all of the series' greatest qualities, its artwork may in fact be its most underrated strength, as it plays an integral yet often unsung role in making One Piece the magical reading experience that it is. So let me know how you feel One Piece's art stacks up amongst other series series in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe, and you can get my extended thoughts on some of the most underrated artwork moments in One Piece in my weekly podcast by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description below.